Good morning. That's what I like, interaction, and that's what uh, this hour is going to be about. We're going to involve you in answering some questions that are very important for Western. So first, a warm welcome to you all, our Western advocates. A warm welcome on behalf of Washington's premier public and proudly publicly purposed university. Thank you for being here this morning, of course, and thank you for being here for Western year after year. Now, on occasions like this, I just can't resist, and I just love bragging about the excellence that's Western. But this morning, there are more pressing matters. Protecting, directing, and building upon that excellence is our immediate challenge. We will be talking about being publicly purposed. What are the public's purposes for us? We must get it right for Western, for Washington, importantly for you. We use the title Western Advocates very intentionally. We simply must have your continuing and aggressive advocacy for Western. And to have that, we know that you must believe in Western and where together we are choosing to go. So even though there are almost 200 gathered here, the next hour will be interactive. And by the end, you will have helped us in defining Western's ongoing strategic priorities. At key points, we will be using clickers. To collect your thoughts, please grab hold of yours. There should be one by your seat. Everybody have one? Do raise your hand if you don't. Uh, they're just uh, two complicated tasks here. They're complicated for me. Our students have no problem with this. Uh, first, you have to turn your clicker on by pressing the button on the bottom. Now, each clicker must join our session. To do this, you have to use the number pad. Notice there's a pad with numbers and letters. We'll only be talking about numbers. And you need to enter the two digits, one, one. When you do so, a green light should momentarily flash under that check sign. If you have any trouble, simply hold up your clicker and our staff will bring you another. Well, the hard part's over. Let's take a test drive. And we're going to ask you to indicate where Bellingham is located, or excuse me, where Western is located. <laughs> Yeah, the question might have been, is Belling which side of the border is Bellingham on, might have been the question. But uh, is, is Western located in Bellingham, Everett, Anacortes, Mount Vernon, Seattle, or Bremerton? And remember, this isn't Chicago. If there's an unused clicker near you, don't grab it. Vote only once, please. You can go ahead and click your clicker now. If you change your mind, you can click again. Your last click is the one that counts. Looks like Bellingham, <laughs> but I have to tell you, I'm an old prof, and you know that fact when you know I started off by throwing a trick question at you. Western is located in all the areas on the slide, in Anacortes, bringing in $7 million worth of federally funded cutting edge research, in Mount Vernon, working with PACCAR on applications of advanced composites. In Seattle, Everett, Bremerton, and Port Angeles, offering high-quality Western degrees and certificates at the graduate and undergraduate levels. Let's try one more practice question. The official Washington State motto is, Go Dogs! <laughs> Next year, Cougs! Make that a double-tall Frappuccino, where if you think we've got problems, look south to California or al -Qai. And again, you can start clicking now. Well, 
Well, it looks like we have a few uh, Husky and uh, Cougar fans there, but uh, most of you did pick Alki, and, and, and Alki is our state motto, and I, I chose it because it means hope for the future. And that's really the underlying theme of my remarks this morning and of our being here together this morning, working together. During times like this, it's really important to remember our state motto. It could be Western's motto as well, to have hope for brighter futures, to commit to do all we can to be Washington's best hope for brighter futures, to share public hopes for the future, what we are calling public purposes. In turbulent times, we cannot duck tough questions, and so I'm going to be putting tough questions in front of you. We will organize around really four quite difficult questions. The first is, what should the state of, or why should the state of Washington be in the business of public baccalaureate education? What are the expectations our state has for its six public baccalaureate institutions? Given those expectations, how does Western fit in? What should our role be? And given those roles, what should we set at Western as two or three overarching goals, and what should be the basic strategies for achieving them? So let's start. What are the state of Washington's expectations? Please note that uh, simply asking that question is a shift. Public aid purpose means that we do not assume that we know what is best for you. So where do the answers come concerning public purposes? Most obviously, from the public. But these questions are complicated. They're not questions we typically think about. They are not questions that legislators typically have the time to think about. None of us do. So to get the public's answers, we need a dialogue. We needed conversations. We figured a hundred of them minimum. And that's what we've been about the past few months. We had conversations with parents, students, alumni, elected leaders, employers, opinion leaders in the various media, K-12 education, leaders in the private and not-for-profit sectors, leaders of the communities of color that enrich our state, leaders in the labor union, and just plain neighbors in Bellingham. We had conversations in Whatcom County, many, many in Seattle and Bellevue, and across the state and beyond as far as the East Coast. I'm curious how many of you participated in one of the 100 conversations. Please grab your clickers and let's uh, indicate whether you were able to participate or not. You can go ahead and click now. Quite a few, in fact, most of you. For those of you in the no category, though, it's really no, not yet. For this gathering this morning constitutes conversation number 101. So let's get to those four tough questions. Why is the state in the business of providing baccalaureate education, and what does it expect from its universities? We heard many things in those conversations. We heard that when it comes to student needs, our great strength is the developed potential of our graduates. When it comes to meeting the needs of employers, we were told to build strengths, and that employers seek grads with real world problem solving, flexibility, international understandings. People recognize that higher education is one of the few levers the state has to build brighter futures for all. We must, people told us, be ever more transparent and accountable. We heard that the state's higher education institutions must be given flexibility to be efficient, to innovate, to be entrepreneurial. Controlling costs, we were told, is ever more critical. And the universities need to expand access to those most rapidly growing components of our state's population people from families where parents are less likely to have gone to college. 
While these findings may not seem surprising in and of themselves, when taken together, we come to one of our most surprising findings. What the public in the 100 conversations is telling us differs markedly from what we sometimes hear in Olympia. Certainly, we are privileged to work with those who represent us with real understanding of what brighter futures requires. Prominent among them, Governor Greg War, who could not be here with us today, but is represented by Leslie Goldstein, excuse me, Leslie Goldstein. Our local representative and Western alum, Kelly Linville, uh, the important higher education leader and leader of education uh, brought in our state, Phyllis Kinney. And here with us today, also a Western alum, Representative Scott White. But they would point out, because I've heard each of them tell me this, that they encounter different perspectives from their own when working with their colleagues. And most importantly, they need allies. They need advocates. So how do these messages from Olympia differ? Workforce training is the top priority. And for reasons mysterious to me, baccalaureate education does not count. Universities will be funded to expand capacity only in high-tech, high-demand fields. From some in Olympia, I care about you. I care about our social needs of our state more. We annually prepare perhaps 100 compliance reports on how we are doing things, much less on why and with what results. One-size-fits-all approaches. Keep tuition down. And from Olympia, we must protect and expand access to the two years, even at the price of further cuts to baccalaureates. The difference between what we heard in the 100 conversations and what we hear often in Olympia is troubling. The question we face, of course, is in what direction should we move? Toward what we are hearing in the 100 conversations? Toward what we are hearing in Olympia? Or perhaps should Olympia be moving in the direction of what we are hearing from the public? We must be very careful here, though. We have to make sure that in those conversations, we are not hearing only what we want to hear. We need to do a lot of reality checking. Some of that will happen next. We count on you to candidly tell us what it is we need to know. Let's start with a tough one, price, quality, tuition. In the course of the 100 conversations, people discussed various, various facts of life for higher education in Washington. State support has fallen well below national averages. Tuition, as a consequence, has, written, has risen, but still remains below national averages. Because of courage shown in Olympia recently in funding the state need grant, we remain proudly above average in the above the average national average in the availability of need-based financial aid. People knew and were alarmed that we rank 48th out of the 50 states in the percentage of our population who are able to go on to baccalaureate education. Tuition increases hide the fact that costs per student have not risen at Western Washington University. Washington's public baccalaureate institutions together rank as the most cost efficient and productive in the nation. And because of these cost controls and efficiencies, public baccalaureate education in Washington is still known for its quality even though the state and tuition funding levels are below national averages. So with the critical exception of access, this is really a remarkable story to tell, one that as citizens of Washington we should take great pride in. It's a powerful position from which to advance if we have the requisite courage and clarity of vision to do so. Now, when it comes to price, quality, tuition, that's what the conversation's focused on, because when it comes to efficiency and cost, we're already best of class. We do need to continue to focus on that, but let's take up price, quality, tuition. We can have two of three, but with diminishing state support, not all three. 
Consider the same tough choices faced by our trustees, by our legislators, and on our campuses. Grab those clickers again. With state support further declining in Wash for Washington's public universities, should we maintain quality through higher tuition, maintain quality through reduced capacity, maintain capacity through lower quality, maintain low tuition through lower quality. You go ahead and click your clickers now, please. The questions don't get any easier, I have to warn you. This is a tough one. Well, what we're seeing is, is uh, really quite startling to me to see that uh, overwhelming uh, emphasis on maintaining quality. Put that first, uh, some uh, variation in, in just what the best strategy might be there. And I should say, uh, this morning we will not have sufficient time to adequately reflect on all you will be telling us, but all these data are being recorded, it's being videocast back to our campus, and we will be studying and, and, and uh, interpreting and, and, and using these, this information uh, to, to drive us forward. Now, I said that when it comes to price, quality, and access, we can have two out of three. There is a way, of course, to get three out of three. That could be done with some modest return to past levels of state support for the higher education of our people. It is about priorities. Our state and its dedicated elected officials have to make difficult choices. Higher education K-12, K-12 higher education social services. A few clicks and a couple of slides are not up to sorting out the nuances there. Sort them out though, that must happen. I will say in the 100 conversations, and looking long term, people worried. They worried about how we can continue to support our laudable commitments as a state to social justice and to K-12 education over the decades ahead if we do not have or do not continue our strong economy. And among the people we conversed with, higher education was seen as the one lever the state most, could most clearly pull in order to have that longer term, brighter future, economically, socially. We heard a lot about competing priorities within higher education. We also clearly heard that partnerships are critical. During the conversations, people became aware that Western is, today, on the campuses of many two-year institutions. We collaborate with Bellingham's Technical College and a Technology Development Center with Whatcom Community College, we're aggressively pursuing ways to be more efficient by sharing and combining services. Our campus-to-campus -campus mentoring and large-scale pipeline project is an initiative of Western, 11 school districts, and four other colleges. We're building a regional alliance of seven higher education institutions to take such preceding efforts to a higher level. There are also challenges we talked about in collaboration. Western does remain primarily a traditional age, primarily admitting traditional age freshman students. We cannot ignore budget impacts. If we took a thousand in freshmen and replaced them with a thousand transfer students, the additional red ink on our bottom line would amount to, we estimate, minimally another two million dollars. And there's an issue we face with all of higher ed in our state, and that is that those who start at the two-year college planning to get a baccalaureate degree face the long odds of four to one in actually ever completing that degree. Now, people knew that Western has focused upon success as a traditional university, traditional age students, residential, campus-based. What about our future as publicly purposed? Again, please find your clicker. Building stronger partnerships with two-year institutions should become a higher priority for Western. Do you agree or disagree? Please do click your clicker now.
some interesting variation in, in people's advice. It would look like uh, most lean towards uh, more partnerships. Uh, there are certainly those who are undecided or would, who, di who would disagree. And that's really important for all of us to reflect upon because we understand that there are important trade-offs here in terms of uh, the state's needs are wanting to be a part of that as a publicly purposed university. And I guess the way I would put it is really our, our brand clarity, what, what sets Western apart. Those are things we really do need to continue to work on and think, think about as we go forward. Now I want to throw a tougher question at you. Some background. The priority in Olympia has been clear. Increase access at the two-year level. Over the past 10 years, state support for public baccalaureate education has been cut in real, actual, bottom line dollars by $300 million. During the same period, community college funding has actually increased by $100 million. So today, more of the state's public higher education budget goes to community colleges than to the six baccalaureates combined. There's not another state in the nation where that is the case. Providing capacity for one student at a community college now costs you, the taxpayers, the exact same as providing capacity for one more student at Western pursuing a four-year degree. One consequence of our focusing on building capacity and support at the two-year level, and it is a very positive one, is that we rank fifth among the 50 states in our population's attendance at two-year colleges. Another consequence, and you've already heard it, we rank 48th out of the 50 states in the same measure. Um, we'll take questions. Is it a question? Yeah. Yes, that includes the extra cost of upper division laboratories and instruction in smaller classes. The average state uh, cost provision per student now at Western is within $30 of what it is for, um, for uh, the average at the community colleges. You're talking double on a per year state. No, no, just per year. It, it's for a year. If you just ask, per, per, take all the students in the community college system, divide by what the state provides, there is an average number of what the cost is being provided by the state. Do the same for Western. Those two numbers are the same. Thank you for asking. And people are usually startled when they learn that fact. So it's, it's, it's important that, that, because we have important decisions to reach as a state when we look at things about where should four-year education be provided, should we be expanding more campuses, things like that, and taking the ever more tightly stretched taxpayers' dollars and figuring out how to best use them. One uh, consequence, as I mentioned, is that we now rank 48th out of the 50 states in terms of participation in baccalaureate education. Yet the state's needs for baccalaureate degree holders remains demonstrably higher than for those with less preparation. Dramatically so as revealed by unemployment rates and average income levels. Have no doubt about this. We need and must sustain strong two-year institutions. But 48 out of 50, we are a highly educated state. So what's going on here? One person in the 100 conversations put it this way. The higher education priority in Olympia appears to be to prepare our sons and daughters just enough to go to work for those who come from out of state to take the better paying jobs. So what is your message for us? We may not like what we're going to hear from you. But we need to ask, grab those clickers again. Increasing access to our community and technical colleges should no longer have a higher priority than increasing access at our public baccalaureate universities. Please click now. I was holding my breath here. I had no idea what you might say. But this is um, uh, an important uh, message that 
we together need, need to figure out how we can uh, as effectively communicate as possible for our state's future. Again, we'll take these data and much care, uh, more carefully analyze it, for we fully understand that we are a uh, state proudly populist in our culture, and even raising and talking about the subjects I just did, I worry about in terms of uh, uh, offending people who rightly value the important roles that community colleges do, and it's not an us against them, but going forward, how do we have the balance our state needs? That's really what we need to figure out as a state. The questions do not get any easier. How about our student preparation and what our state's economy requires? Alumni from our colleges report enormous satisfaction with their preparation and great professional success. At one of the most recent conversations over in Wenatchee, an employer uh, who had employed many people over the course of his career said that uh, when a new hire comes in, he can tell within two weeks that that person is a graduate of Western simply by the superior performance and without looking at the resume. But we were not having these conversations to simply have our egos massaged. We certainly heard about areas where improvements or additional emphasis is required. We now are preparing students who must be competitive as employers can hire the very best from anywhere in the world and must be off our campus where people are in their lives, in the state, and in their careers for life enrichment as well as for just-in-time career-relevant, career-changing learning. We must be effectively teaching coming generations with their different mindsets and different skill sets. We must be serving the fastest growing components of our state's population. We must be preparing students to be successful in a state that must build on the strength and diversity. I could go on. What we did not hear is what I sometimes hear when I go to Olympia. We need to concentrate on workforce training, largely in high-demand, high-tech areas. Now, Western has advanced science and technology programs that I will proudly and confidently put against any in this state. But what was also known in the 100 conversations is that complex firms with global reach need the value added by graduates with many different strengths. Who do you suppose employs more Western grads than anybody else? It's two firms, names we all know, Boeing and Microsoft. High-tech, advanced, leading-edge organizations our state is so fortunate to have here. We do have many computer science and engineering graduates working there, but most of the alums at Boeing and at Microsoft graduated from the College of Humanities and Social Sciences and from the College of Business and economics. One of the three-person team who led development of the highly successful Windows 7 was a Western alum. She graduated from a College of Business and Economics. A Western alum of whom we are also very proud is a longtime vice president at Boeing. Her degree from Western is in German. So when it comes to adding value to the workplace, what kind of education is needed. What has lasting value? We respond to state needs, immediate needs, certainly. Our trailblazing programs in neurosciences and advanced materials, research and application are but just two recent examples. But let me start by asking you this. Grab those clickers again. For those of you who have been uh, out of uh, been, been about 10 years or more, we won't ask how many more years since you graduated from college. Um, think about what you're doing today, your job or your career, and think back to when you were an undergraduate. Was what you're doing today well known and well understood back then? Was the job known, but how we do it today was not well known? Was the job only vaguely known and much has changed? Or is your job today, back then, not on anybody's radar screen? Please push your clicker now. I'm still trying to figure out what my job is, by the way.
Wow, uh, quite, quite a variety. Uh, the, the, the most frequent observation is the job was known, but we're just doing things differently today. Uh, and uh, then it, uh, but uh, most folks uh, predominantly are uh, in occupations or jobs where um, uh, things are quite different than was understood as an undergraduate. And that's a challenge that higher education faces in workforce training. How do we prepare people for careers not yet known or for ways of do performing those careers not yet known and for societal challenges yet to emerge? So let me put that to you as a priority for our university. The, states need, the state needs public universities that make it a priority to prepare students for careers yet to come and challenges not yet known. Do you agree or disagree? Please get your clicker now. overwhelming agreement here. This is uh, very interesting to see. And again, it's, it's, it's quite different than when the funding choices are made down in Olympia, I see being expressed in those budget decisions. That's uh, very, very helpful for us to know. And uh, is again, the sort of thing that uh, we need advocates for as well. Uh, thank you for those results. So uh, we started with the question, big questions, tough questions. Why is Washington in the business a public baccalaureate education, and what does it expect from its public universities? Our main finding depends upon whom we think is speaking for Washington. We've got done with the tough questions. Tough question number three. What does the estate expect of Western? We have been exploring Washington and higher education in general. When it comes to the 100 conversations and their expectations for Western, we've heard many things. I will list five for us to focus on. I'm really going to put you to work on these to help us sort out some priorities. We heard prepare students for careers not yet known, challenges yet to emerge. We heard, importantly, prepare students in cutting edge areas. We heard expand access to brighter futures for the state's richly diverse population. We heard be transparent, accountable, document results. We heard strategically protect quality. What you do, do well. I'm going to ask you to, again, help set some strategic priorities. And it's going to take me four questions to do it, so please bear with me. I want you to begin by picking the one single thing on that list that you believe is most important for Western. If we had to put most of our marbles on one of these five options, which one should it be? Please hit your clicker now. You're getting a little extra time here because it's a tough one, really tough. We've got a variety of different views, which is exactly what uh, we would expect from our advocates. And uh, we see that uh, uh, being protecting quality, again, emerges as the, as the choice of most, but not uh, a majority. Uh, people also think preparing students for careers not yet known, challenges yet to emerge, is quite important. And uh, also that uh, next comes expanding access to brighter futures for the state's richly diverse populations. And it's important to, to have these recognized, of course, that all five, we were told, is important for Western. Uh, but to get some sense of priorities, this is very helpful. And now I'm going to ask you to do something even more challenging. Go back to those same five questions. And what I want you to tell me is pick the one. Tell us. Pick the one of those five which is least important. Please begin now.
again, a, a variety of different uh, views, uh, preparing students in cutting edge areas. That is very interesting. That, again, is quite different than uh, messages we get elsewhere. It's least, but it doesn't mean it's unimportant. It just means among uh, the things Western should become uh, uh, paying attention to that. And interestingly, something I preach, but you're telling me uh, is among all the things we have to do, not the top priority, is to be accountable with transparent and documented results. Um, that's all data that uh, we will be looking at in much more detail. We're going to be combining this information in just a minute. We'll be back to it. But before we can really talk about strategic priorities, looking outside is the easier task. Looking critically inside is as important before we figure out what it is we really need to be doing. So I'm going to ask you two more questions using these same five items. Looking at the, um, what I'd like you to do first is, this is a, perhaps the, the, the easier, more pleasant one. Of those five, which is the one that Western is currently doing the best job at, where we have the highest performance? Please start clicking your, you may start clicking your clickers now. Really, wow. This, this again, quality emerges. It's very important that we, uh, in your view, are, uh, are, are protecting quality, that what we do do, we do very well, and that we also do um, a next uh, 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 top job of preparing students for careers not yet known, challenges yet to emerge. Now we're going to make it even a little bit harder and ask you to look at these five and think about, of those five, where are we doing least well? I used the word worst, but those who keep me politically uh, correct said I couldn't use that word. So what are we doing least well? Please begin. Very interesting. What, what, what uh, comes up uh, loudly and clearly to us, and again, we ask these questions having no idea where you are, but this is very helpful information to us, is expand access to brighter futures for the state's richly diverse populations. And there are concerns in uh, all of the other areas, except perhaps with the uh, strategically protect quality. Now I'm going to ask you to really uh, use this information as we go to work for Western. I want to combine the results of all four questions. And I want to put them together so that we can set some priorities for the university. Imagine we uh, simultaneously consider both uh, importance and performance on a graph that looks like this. Here we have importance going from low to high. We have performance going from low up to high. Imagine something you've identified you say is very important and that we're doing a good job at. That's something we need to protect, continuously improve. Supposing it's important and we aren't doing a good job. That's something we have an opportunity to strategically enhance. Imagine it's something you tell us is not as important, but uh, we're doing a good job at. There are opportunities there to redirect emphases or priorities. And supposing it's something that uh, is, you have found is, is not important, that we're not doing terribly good at, there they need to attend to redirection, reallocation, setting new priorities becomes uh, a necessity. So that's what we're going to do now is take your answers. These are four questions, 200 responses, a lot of number crunching. We don't have the software sophistication to crunch the numbers and display the results in real time. Here, we had to do it the old-fashioned way, pencils, paper, perspiration. And I've been stalling for a minute to see that that was done. But now the envelope, please. <laughs> Thank you. Let's look at the first question. Prepare students for careers not yet known, challenges yet to emerge. In terms of importance, you rank that number two, so it's up there among the most important things we need to do. 
And in terms of uh, performance, you ranked at number two, that it's uh, something that uh, uh, we are currently doing fairly well. It falls in this category of something we need to protect, but also continuously improve. That uh, is what you're telling us as we set our priorities. Question number two, prepare students in cutting edge areas. You have told us in terms of performance that it's the second least important thing we should attend to. It's down here in the less important category. In terms of our performance, you're telling us it's in the middle range. It's ranks number three out of the five questions right there. So it obviously falls on this side of, uh, of really understanding uh, if we've got our priorities right here uh, in terms of um, we're the preparing students in cutting edge areas and given what kind of University Western should be as it prepares to be publicly purposed. Let's look at the next question. Expand access to brighter futures for the students' richly diverse populations. In terms of uh, importance, you're telling us it's ranked middle of those five, all of which we agree are important. You say this is ranked number three for Western. And in terms of performance, you are telling us right now it is the least highly, it's, it's, it's the thing we do the least well at as a university. Very important for us to hear as we look forward and decide on our future as your publicly purposed university. Being accountable with transparent and documented results. In terms of importance, it gets ranked fifth. This is a genuine surprise to me because uh, I guess it's something I believe in, but uh, this is, we're here to listen and not to try to persuade you otherwise. But and, and again, all five are important, but what you're telling us is that this is uh, least important and in terms of how good a job you're, we're doing here, you're also telling us we're doing a very good job. At least compared to the others, it's not something we're best at. It ranks four out of the five items on our list. And the last, strategically protect quality. What you do, do well. This, you're telling us, is the most important thing to do. You're also telling us it's what we're currently the very best at. And so that, again, raises for us what it is it needs to direct us as we look forward. I don't know about you, but I learned a lot just from your responses there. That, I can't tell you how valuable that will be as we take these things back to our campus. And I remind you that our campus is listening in and watching in live time right now. So, of course, I'm sure you're feeling some of the frustration I feel, and that is that clickers and forced choice answers don't allow us to even begin to explore the nuances and the ambiguities in all of this. And we only took up five roles. Doing all that comes next, and selecting strategies. We did seek advice on strategies in the 100 conversations. In concluding, here's a taste of what we did here. From the 100 conversations, we were told now in difficult times is precisely when we need to think big. We must be much, much clearer about who we are and what we aspire to be. We are a hidden jewel. Stop hiding. You told us you want us to be part of helping Olympia understand what Washington expects of higher education and that the 100 conversations must be just a start, not the conclusion of our working together. Keep the conversations going. You have helped so much already in helping us understand where Western needs to go, and you've set our sights high. The path we're charting can take us from premier in the Northwest to best of class, but the path is steep. We need you to continue to be with us, to speak up if we deviate from our mission, to help those in Olympia better understand what long-term our state requires, and to be there to help the university with your expertise, your time, and as so many of you have done year after year, to support us philanthropically as well. Hope for the future. Let's hope for the future. You shared hopes for Washington's future. Those shared hopes will drive us. Your continuing engagement sustains 
our bright hopes for Western's future, for Washington's future. You've given us so much to think about already. And this we do commit to you. We will deliver on the purposes the public has for Western. Thank you so much for your involvement. We now have some time for questions. There will be microphones available to be handed to you. The things you'd like to ask about, conversations you'd like to continue, outrage, denunciations, all is fair game. Please, raise your hand. Yes, back right back. We'll, we'll get a microphone right to you. Less than one in four of the students entering community colleges get a degree. What proportion of those that are transferring to Western get a degree? Um, I'll, I'll answer directly that what I said, the odds are one in four, which really means only 19 percent or less than 20 percent uh, who start with the intention of a baccalaureate degree continue. And I want to make clear, that's not a community college problem. That's not a four-year problem. That's both our problems to solve that. And I think there are lots of creative things we can be doing to make that a better number. That's really important. I don't have the statistic at the top of my uh, list, but I can tell you the, the, the graduation rates for our transfer students, are, as for the people who start as freshmen, are very impressive. And what happens is we actually see that the transfer students perform as well as the nat what we call the native students in the upper division. But there's a reason for that. There's a sorting process that goes on, and the students who don't quite make it in the community colleges we don't see at the four-year. Well, they might. Um, so that's, that's, that's why that statistic is it. But I, I think the important point is this is a shared responsibility to increase baccalaureate level education in our state. Other questions, comments folks might have? Right here, please, a microphone will be coming right to you. Thank you. Uh, on the very first set of questions, uh, I felt a little disturbed that we were presented with, uh, in a sense, a false choice. Yeah. And I realize this is simple, it's not complex and all that, yeah. but I've worked as a consultant in industry yeah. for 35 plus yeah. years. And the choice between quality and cost mm -hmm. leads many private sector companies to do the wrong thing. Yeah. They try to cut themselves to greatness. Yeah. It doesn't work. So you really have to find a way to both increase quality and lower cost yeah. at the same time, yeah. and usually that's through innovation, creativity, and so on. Yeah. And I can see you nodding, so you agree. I fully agree, and, and, I, and I believe why we were able to maintain, I don't have good documentation of this, but I think it's generally understood around the nation I have before I came to Washington. We have quality public baccalaureate education in this state. But our costs are way below national averages. And I think it is that innovation that is a part of why we are where we are. And we must continue to relentlessly innovate. What I do sometimes react to is what I call magical thinking. Because there is a view that if we just did x, y, or z, the problem would go away. And we are already best of class in controlling costs. So we can always and must continually improve the idea that there's a big quantum jump we could make is probably unrealistic in that. Other thoughts? Yes, back there, please. We'll get a microphone right to you. <laughs> we do have people listening uh, around the state, actually, so it has to be. Thank you. Okay. On the subject of quality and cost, uh, th this group, I think, uh, pointed out that they think it's important to maintain quality to higher tuition. But you've pointed out that already access to four-year degrees in, in the state of Washington is below the national average. Yeah. So if we continue to increase tuition costs, aren't we going to be restricting higher education or for access to four-year degrees uh, to these people that really could benefit from it? That's, that's certainly true, and that's, that's a serious concern we all have to share. Uh, we, we, we start from uh, having better financial aid than you find, need-based financial aid than you find in the rest of the country. Uh, but uh, the real problem we're seeing in our data are not those with the, coming from the families with the lowest incomes. Uh, there are a variety of support programs, federal and in the state, that uh, do not create access barriers for them. It's in the uh, next uh, 20 to 30, if you st it is in the more middle group, say, if you rank people by family income, those in about the 30 to 50 percent family income groups where, the, where the, uh, the support that's provided through financial aid doesn't fully meet uh, costs. 
I want to add another thought, though, as, if, if I may, to what you're observing, and that is there is a sort of view that, well, maybe the solution is higher tuition with a portion dedicated to need-based uh, uh, financial aid. That doesn't work either. That's part of that magical thinking. We are nearing the ceiling of, I think, what, uh, uh, to use the, uh, the term, the marketplace can bear when it comes to tuition for a university like Western. And the pri our, private, our colleagues in the private sector, important partners, would be the first to tell you they could not survive on tuition and philanthropy either. They got a disproportionate share, actually, of federal financial aid, which helps keep their doors open. And so this idea that we could just run on tuition alone without state support is something we've got as Western advocates to make sure is not misunderstood. Other thoughts? Yes, please. Again, we'll get, because we have people listening all over, we'll get a microphone right to you. Yeah, when we say we're 48th in terms of baccalaureate degree production, is that... And, and this may have been in the numbers or in the presentation, but is that just in raw numbers or is that as a percentage of the high school graduates? And just to further complicate things, of those high school graduates, uh, if it is a percentage, do we track how many of those get their degrees out of state versus in state? Uh, all important questions. and. Um, by the way, all the statistics I gave you on cost, efficiency, 48th out of, comes from a national source, the National Center for Higher Education Statistics. These aren't the numbers we cooked up. These are data that are out there on the web uh, and, and which involve all 50 states. And I'm talking about the six public baccalaureates combined when we use those statistics. And yes, we rank 48th out of 50 in the percentage of our state population who are participating in baccalaureate education. So it's based on population size. That is, it's it's, it's corrected for that. As to the, the other important questions, um, we don't, I, I, I have not seen the data. I know we track it. I have not, as a state, on how many of our students are going out of state to get their baccalaureate education. What we do know is that we are a very highly educated state. And um, I had in the earlier versions of the slide a question about how many of you got your uh, degrees from a public university in Washington and um, what, what I, what we, we asked that question in the 100 conversation. It's amazing as we go around the room uh, among uh, leadership groups, how few actually did do that. Uh, so that's really why. We've had the good fortune as a state to be a place people want to live. And we've taken advantage of that. That's great. But we also have to remind ourselves the baby boom is retiring. The world is competing globally for talent right now. And we will be in a, in a, in a, increasing competition to, to attract talent so we can continue to flourish as a state. Yeah, I didn't fully answer, but maybe we could talk privately. I'll try to get more complete answers for the important questions you asked. Yes. We'll get a microphone right to you back there. Picking someone up. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Good to see you. Yeah. Hi, Bruce. Question regarding the funding and state allocation about cost-benefit analysis. From what you said, the return for four-year funding versus two-year funding, there's a pretty, pretty, uh, there's a gap. And so I'm wondering if you couldn't get more information and a better way to influence or at least inform mm -hmm. people in, uh, in Olympia about what the state is getting yeah. for that comparison. It, it, it is a complicated, nuanced set of questions that we're just starting to think through that we need you to be starting to think through because we really have to figure out how is the state in a benefit cost analysis and where dollars are ever scarcer, how are we going to get the best results for our state? And I you stir in the cost figures I gave you to the state. We uh, stir in the, um, the retention rate issues, which are part of, sort of the productivity side of the equation. And, uh, but we also have to consider access and an important advantage and an important reason to maintain strong community colleges is they are where an awful lot of people are on the ground. And that's really important too. So can the, the public baccalaureates in our state last year to the HEC board promised to meet all demand for growth in uh, baccalaureate education. We did that in writing and publicly and in a report. And that is our commitment. We can do that within our existing capacity. Don't go out and have to build new buildings. 
things like that. If there can be the same sort of support for those students that is currently provided to the community colleges on a per student basis. But as I said, these are challenges for the, the state to figure out. Bear in mind one other thing. I really get into this, I'm sorry, but I hear talk about building new campuses here and there when the demand clearly is not there. And I hear about uh, two-year institutions becoming four-year institutions. And what we have to also stir into this equation is that two, uh, those last two years are a lot more expensive, not just in class size and things like that, but in the libraries you have to provide, and the laboratories you have to provide, and the kind of computer support you have to provide. All that infrastructure and investment has to be made. The baccalaureates already have that and say we're ready to meet that demand. Other questions? Well, back here, please. Um, I have more maybe of a comment. You've please. been talking a lot about comparing nationally, but really we need to look internationally. And I think an interesting question for the advocates and the other conversations would be, are we willing to pay higher taxes to support higher education, which is why internationally we're not competing? Because if you look at, especially European countries, the you know, the taxes are very high, and education is basically free, mm -hmm. higher education. So I don't know if you have a comment on that. Or that's that's uh, very interesting. And, and we heard in the 100 conversations a common recurring theme, and it had many, it came up in many ways. And I didn't have an opportunity in, in this limited time to explore it. But it's all these dimensions of international. We have to be thinking globally. The one I did bring up that intrigues me is that a Western graduate now competes with everybody else in the world for a job. What are we as a university providing as a value added, as a mark of distinction that will allow them? That is an important question for us to ask and a difficult one and a challenging one. You raise other subjects in terms of our state's commitment. We had, when I arrived here, the commitment to be one of the global challenge states. I haven't heard that in a year and a half again, where we were going to compete with the world, one of the states would compete with the world. Uh, I think as advocates for Western, as advocates for Washington, we have to be thinking globally and being globally competitive as a state. We have to have that. We, we, we have the basis to do that. We have the strength, if we have the will to do that. Other thoughts? Um, yes, please. So on the question of the two-year degree versus four-year degree, I guess we want to make sure we're solving the right problem. Yeah. Do we have any insight as to how many of the students that are getting a two-year degree just would not have been able to or have elected to go on to a four-year degree? And so is it really a question of either or, or is there incremental access to education as a result of the two-year degree? Um, and should we really be focusing you know, on is, is it either or, or should we be really focusing on both? And, and again, I want to keep coming back to this isn't us against them at all. One of our strategies, what you've told us to do, and we will do it, is to build stronger partnerships with the two-year institutions. And we, that's a, we really, that's, we need to multiply our impact and our effectiveness, and that's a way together we will. We've already started having those meetings and seeing how we can share services, do a better job of serving the private sector in our area, uh, doing a better job in international. We're looking at all ways to partner. Um, when it comes to two-year, the statistic I gave you was for those who started a two-year saying they want to go on to get a baccalaureate degree, 19% do. But we all have the challenge of raising aspirations in our state. And this is something I didn't really get. Um, I talked with major elected officials about our need to raise the aspirations of our young people to want two-year and four-year degrees. And I was, well, we have really worked hard and we have invested in K-12. We have strong K-12 schools, and that's true. And that's fortunate. But it doesn't make a darn bit of difference if the young people aren't interested in going on to get two-year advanced education. I mean, it helps some. But if our goal is baccalaureate and uh, two-year degrees, having those fine schools is not enough. The missing part is to have young people, particularly young people from families where moms and dads have not gone to college, have those young people's aspirations raised and challenged and, and that we are beginning and is a, we think a challenge of being a publicly purposed university is to take a leadership role in doing just that. Other questions please? Who has next? Yes please go right ahead. Um, it was clear from the advocates responses that uh, strategic protection of quality was a top priority. 
Um, and as a student at Western, I was just curious as to how we're evaluating quality. Um, and then if we were hypothetically to sacrifice quality on a limited level to protect uh, or to keep tuition costs low, um, what that would look like. We, we have a, a variety of, um, of um, dashboard indicators now, which uh, at the direction of our trustees we have developed that include a variety of measures of quality that allow people to now drill down actually to things like the individual classroom to get some measures. So we're making some progress there. I, I've not been at another university that has even gone this far yet in asking that very important question. Let me talk a little bit about one indicator, and that's time it takes a student to get a degree. One of the things we heard too frequently in the 100 conversations was, we love what our son or daughter is doing at Western. They're getting a fabulous education. It's the best we could imagine. And we're worried they can't get a class they need to graduate on time. Uh, we are in the middle of budget deliberations. We are cutting yet more dollars out. We're cutting $3 million out of next year's budget, which begins in a month on top of $9 million we've already cut out. We are cutting more than that because we want to put money back in the bottlenecks in the curriculum. So when that budget comes out in a week or two, you're going to see that we've taken that, what we've learned from the 100 conversations, very seriously, because we think that's the biggest threat to our students, to our emphasis on quality, as you've advised us, that we need to do. And I'm sorry, the second part of your question about keeping tuition low, if you could repeat that, please. Well, I was just wondering if, hypothetically, we were to sacrifice quality on a limited yeah. level to save tuition costs, um, or because I know that was another high priority, was keeping the tuition costs low. Yeah. Um, and keeping accessibility to the university um, high. I was just wondering how that would look to a student in the classroom. It's, uh, you, 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 I, I, I sometimes feel as a university president, I spend too much time thinking in dollar terms instead of thinking about what really matters, which is education and learning and quality. But I, it's the way we have to. And as we look at our balance sheets and, and numbers like that, there are a variety of strategies. The simplest one is to run on tuition alone. And that's what some universities around the country do. What is it that the tuition will buy, whatever its level? And that really means a whole lot of part-time and adjunct faculty. At, uh, you, you can see percentages as high as 80 and 90 percent of faculty being part-time and adjunct at uh, some colleges that I'm aware of. And that has real, that, that, that's less expensive education. It helps keep uh, the costs down. It is a very different quality of education, um, and, and I could develop that further if you would like, but that's, that's uh, one mechanism. The other is simply to allow classes to get larger and larger. It also, the only other way to do it is to start putting caps on and eliminating the higher cost programs. And uh, just to simply say we're going to eliminate or not expand or begin to contract the highest cost, cost programs and just uh, grow the low-cost programs in order to get the tuition. Other, one more question. Please, I wait. Will. Oops. Yes, please. Um, this is more of a comment than a question, but I think it's pretty relevant. Um, Great. A couple of years ago, we, or I should say a couple of weeks ago, we bought a, a storage building from Costco. Yes. And it's a 1,200-pound thing, and it came out on a trailer. And they delivered it. Uh, the two young men who delivered it, uh, uh, I, I made a comment uh, after they unloaded it. Are you going to help me put it together? And actually, they said that uh, yeah, uh, we could do that uh, if you'd like to uh, have us do that. Um, we charge five hundred dollars, and we do it in about six hours. Well, their their truck. The license plate was Kansas, and they came out here uh, hoping to find some uh, opportunity. They're both graduates of a uh, university in Kansas with their bachelor's. And uh, they came out here looking for opportunity, and uh, for now they're delivering and assembling storage sheds. Uh, an observation on that, because we do hear anecdotes like that, but check the statistics. They're out there on the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Even in times like this, the unemployment rates for those with baccalaureate degrees are about half that 
for those with high school or two-year degree. I mean, that's just, that, that, anecdotes will put up opinions, but the actual statistics are you're far more likely to be employed if you have a baccalaureate degree compared to a two-year or only a high school degree. And you're also earning more money. Uh, Hoyt, please. Uh, with apologies to Bruce and the rest of the group, I'm going to insert a comment instead of a question just as well. And by the way, my son graduated from Wake Forest last year with a biology degree, and he's working in a hardware <laughs> store. So, um, They're tough times. And there's no biology department at that high, high hardware store in case He you is care. working, though, Hoyt. Yes, right? he's That's working. <laughs> to the young lady in the back, uh, very good question. And I would just like to say that I graduated from Western in 1980, which is some years ago. Um, and the opportunities and benefits to a young person today as relates to the reputation of your university versus what it was when I graduated, you don't know the difference. Uh, when I graduated in 1980, Western was a wonderful place to go. Uh, I got a great education, and the community around us considered the University of Washington and Washington State. There were some private universities around, and down here there was Western, Central, and Eastern. And to everybody else who's heard me tell this story before, I apologize to you. But you talk to the people that know today. And they're running universities. They're running graduate schools. And by the way, talk to people at the University of Washington who will tell you in their high-quality graduate programs, they select a much higher percentage of Western students than they do University of Washington students for those programs. Uh, but you talk to people who know. Talk to employers. Talk to educators. Talk to politicians. University of Washington. Western Washington University, if you catch them in the right mood, Western Washington University, University of Washington, <laughs> and then Washington State, and then there's some other schools that I don't need to go through the list, but there's a perceived difference in the quality of the education and the kids, excuse me, who are coming through Western now is much greater than it was 30 years ago, and we don't want to lose it. Thank you very much, Hoyt. I know from those fine words in your response, we can count on you as Western's continuing advocates. Thank you for being here this morning. For those of you who are staying for the forum, I do invite you to join me, the rest of us, in the uh, foyer for a reception and continuing conversation on these important subjects. The Business Forum lunch will begin at noon in the Grand Ballroom, one floor down, where we'll have the pleasure, really looking forward to it, of hearing from Mr. Uh, Todd uh, Lywicki. So uh, thank you again for being here, and our pledge to you is to keep the conversations going. Thank you very much.